you are going to find that it is so freeing. And this doesn't mean neglect all of your responsibilities. you continue to support my small channel. It means so much to me every time that you like a video, every time that you comment, and of course, you new subscribers. If you have stumbled upon my channel, I would love it if you would join this community of women who are basically supporting a type of femininity revolution. The femininity revolution, I haven't explained so much and I will in the next video, but it's basically encompassing myself as well as you, the viewers, and all other content creators who are striving to express their femininity and help other women do the same. As you can tell on this channel, we talk about femininity, we talk about being ladylike, elegant, and we also dissect some controversial issues in my coffee and chat series. My name is Cynthia, I'm 25 years old, I'm a married woman, I'm a former model as well as Miss Canada, and I live a peaceful homemaker's life with of course my husband as well as our three fluffy dogs, and if you follow me on Instagram, you will be able to see many videos and pictures of them. Today's video is actually a celebration because on the 13th, so in a few days, it is my birthday. I was inspired by a video that my friend Lauren Howe made a few months ago talking about 26 things that she has learned in 26 years. Considering that this is a girly topic channel, I thought that it would be appropriate to share with you 26 ways in which I try to be elegant and 26 tips that I have for you on how you can be a more elegant woman. I know some of you have requested elegance topics, so I'm hoping that this will be one of many videos to come on how to be elegant. If you have any suggestions, I would love that you leave a, a comment down below on how you practice elegance in your everyday life. So considering this list is long, without further ado, let's get into number one, and that is to smile. I have talked about how everybody can begin this positive body language action. When you smile, it signals to your brain to release some happy endorphins and your body tends to do the same. And when you are happier, you are more confident. And when you are more confident, you flow through your day and therefore you are more elegant. Number two, which is one that I actually had to learn a lot about because when I talk to people, I tend to really want to be in the conversation fully, if that even makes sense. But you do not want to interrupt people. I have talked about some good conversation skills in one of my first few videos. And if you watch that video, although it is a very old video, please don't forget to hit that like button. And I have also touched upon this on a few other videos. We have two ears and one mouth. And and that means that it's so important that we listen to people kind of more than we want to speak. And this doesn't mean that you are going to refrain from expressing your opinion and you're not going to get engage in conversation, but this is going to get you in the habit of respecting and allowing somebody to finish their thought from start to finish. This will also allow you to recognize the appropriate times that you can interject in conversation. If you notice, some of the more elegant people in this world tend to be excellent listeners. So it's always worthwhile to develop this skill. The third thing is to be a planner. And this doesn't mean that you need to have highlighters of all colors and a super large agenda. This basically means that you need to live your day with intention. When you live your day with intention, you are more confident and you are more ready for the curveballs that are going to be thrown your way because we know that this is a part of life and you cannot impede those obstacles that are inevitably on your path. I like to stick to planning three major things that I need to do every single day. For example, today I needed to do something that had to do with my dogs. I will film this video and I will do a household task. This doesn't mean that there are small tasks I need to do. However, I'm prioritizing these three big actions. Number four, learn etiquette practices. And this is going to differ from country to country. Some people have mentioned on my previous etiquette videos how certain practices have differed in their country. So make sure when you are looking into etiquette that you are country appropriate. If you're interested in my etiquette series, I make an etiquette video every single season and stay tuned with the notification bell. I always mess that up. Notification bell on. 
to get the update on the winter etiquette video that will be coming out. Etiquette helps you feel more confident in social situations and back to the concept of confidence and how it can help you feel more elegant. Number five, embrace intention and not perfection. We always want to try to strive to be that type of perfect ideal and some sort of skill or whatever it is in our life. However, when we compare ourselves to that particular ideal, we are going to realize that we're always going to fall short. Instead, focus on the intention and the everyday actions that you're taking to get to that place rather than the end result. It will help make time pass so much faster and you will be more satisfied with your accomplishments. Number six, learn a domestic skill. In this video, which I will link above, I talked about how you kind of want to find your homemaking thing because it's so easy for us to get wrapped up again in that perfect ideal of what a homemaker should be. But when you find your thing, that thing that sparks joy in your homemaking, when you focus on that thing, it doesn't mean neglect the other homemaking practices, but you will find so much fulfillment that will make the other things that you're less interested in more bearable when you do them. When you also pour your attention and your creativity into your homemaking thing, you are going to embrace your feminine femininity. And when you embrace your femininity, you are stepping one step closer to who you are truly meant to be. And that's going to elevate your confidence. And this is going to make you more elegant. The next one, learn to dress for your body. I have mentioned this in passing. However, I will talk about this more in depth in a future video. I am an endomorph. Sadly, I look at a donut and I gain 10 pounds, but this is okay because I have learned to dress for my body. I have learned that I have larger hips and basically just larger below the waist region. So for me, it's going to be flared out skirts, A-line skirts, as well as pants that balance me out. Learning to dress for my body has tremendously helped my confidence because now that I know how to dress for my body type, I feel so much more confident because I am comfortable at all angles wearing all types of clothing in my closet and I don't dread the day where I look at an item and realize that it doesn't properly fit me. Number eight, learn how to properly apply makeup. And you have heard me talk about in my beauty video that I embrace the French style of applying makeup. For these videos, I apply a little bit more makeup. However, on an everyday basis, I like to go for that French look, that more natural makeup. I don't like to put a lot of makeup on my face every single day because I want the makeup to do me justice. I don't want people to be looking at my makeup, I want people to be looking at me. So I would encourage you to actually explore that if it's something that you're interested in. One caveat to this would be if your hobby is actually makeup and you do really enjoy going out to the store and buying a lot of makeup and testing out different makeup looks, there's nothing wrong with that. That is a hobby that fulfills you. But if you are like many other women and makeup just isn't the main priority in your beauty routine necessarily, but you do like it, I would really encourage that you look into the French way of applying makeup. Number nine is to learn how to walk, especially in high heels. I have made a video on that. It's one of my most popular videos and I would encourage you to go see that because I paid thousands of dollars to learn how to walk and I would love it if you would get that information for free. Walking well is one way that you can express elegance because it exudes confidence and ease. The 10th thing is to find your favorite exercise. I will elaborate on feminine exercises in the future. But for now, I wanted to encourage you to try to find your favorite exercise and really indulge in practicing that exercise. Whether that be walking, whether that be swimming, there's this cultural narrative that we need to be doing high intensity workouts all the time. And as somebody that has done high intensity workouts for modeling as well as pageants, I am going to tell you that long term, unless it's something that you are truly passionate about and it is your hobby, these high intensity workouts are not going to last you. Living an elegant life means being comfortable with everything and all the things that you do in your life. So if you are dreading going to do your workout, this is not going to help you basically carry yourself with comfort throughout your life, which is going to detract from living elegantly all day long. Number 11 is to get in touch with nature. This is going to help calm you. And if you're somebody with anxiety, getting in touch with nature, going outside every day, even if it is quite cold and you live in a country such as myself, Canada, and you you might be freezing, dress appropriately for the weather and you will see that once you are outside, it is an instant mood booster. Number 12 is if you drink alcoholic beverages, learn to know your wines and to know your alcohol. This is always 
impressive when you can be the person at the table who can make the decision on the best wine because you have background knowledge of where it comes from, etc, etc. Number 13 is to own up to your mistakes and to be able to genuinely say sorry. Nothing communicates maturity more than being able to recognize when we are wrong and be able to sincerely apologize. Number 14 is to learn your boundaries and when to say no. This is especially important when it comes to time, which goes back to the concept of planning. When you get into the habit of saying no to things, you are going to find that it is so freeing. And this doesn't mean neglect all of your responsibilities, but this is going to allow you the opportunity to understand what truly matters to you. Number 15 is learn to stand up for your own beliefs. Now, as an elegant woman, you do not want to impose your beliefs with other people. However, if you are in a situation where you have to express your own beliefs. Express what you believe in, express why, and finish the conversation there. Ensure that the other person knows that you are not swaying on this point. You are standing firm in your belief and that you they need to accept it or they need to reject it. This doesn't mean re accept your opinion for what it is. You can have friends with differing opinions. This just means accept that you have this opinion and move forward in whatever relationship it is. Number 16 is to learn to take care of her surroundings, to learn to take care of your surroundings. The elegant woman is proud of her surroundings. She's proud of what she owns, whether that be a few things that she owns or a lot. Taking care of your surroundings is a very feminine thing to do as well and is something that I encourage you to do. For me, I have embraced a minimalist mindset by basically choosing the items that bring you joy or not. Kind of a little bit of Kalmari. Number 17 is to keep learning. I also encourage you to never take facts or anything that's given your way as truth without exploring it for yourself. Keep learning about events that are going on in today's world. Keep learning about your interests. This is going to help you feel alive and is going to spur your creativity. Learn to ask appropriate questions. Do not ask people, even though you really want to know, about sex, money, politics, all of those sensitive subjects. Unless you are their best friend, wait a while to ask them those questions. And if you are going to ask those questions after you feel more comfortable in a friendship or a relationship, make sure that you ask if you have permission to ask a touchy question. This really communicates respect, which is an elegant thing to do. All right, this video is very long, but you asked for elegant tips. So number 19 is to volunteer. As you notice, even with the royals, which some people stereotypically say are the, some of the most elegant people on earth, they do a lot of volunteering. Elegant women volunteer their time. They do not over volunteer themselves, but get involved in a charity that you really feel passionate about. Number 20, the elegant woman acts intentionally with her finances. So learn how to save money, learn how to properly spend money and absolutely learn how to invest money. Number 21, do not compete. Elegant women do not compete with each other. Elegant women collaborate with each other. Elegant women raise each other up and elegant women understand that even though there might be a tendency to compete with somebody else, it is not worthwhile to engage in that instinctual behavior and it is most worthwhile to invest in other people. Investing in other people is actually one of the proven ways to yield you with success in whatever it is you're striving for in your life. Number 22 is that she filters her social media. So go ahead and do a social media purge. Pause this video and go filter out your Instagram account. Fill your feed with people that actually encourage you to be better in whatever it is you're striving for in life. For me, this has to do with homemaking and femininity. So I like to follow even a lot of you who have followed me and your feeds are very inspirational on Instagram, for example. And I love following you back because this helps encourage me to be more feminine and to be a better homemaker. Number three is to learn how to properly pronounce words, especially terms that are in different languages. You know I live in Canada, so a lot of the street names are actually in French. 
learn how to properly pronounce street names, it's going to actually exude elegance. Some people might think that you sound a little snobby, but a majority of people are going to really appreciate that you're properly pronouncing that thing. And if you don't know how to pronounce somebody's name or a particular thing, excuse yourself beforehand before you're going to try to pronounce that thing. Number 24 is to learn how to accept a compliment. And I actually was not very good at this throughout my life. Learning to accept compliments basically just means genuinely smiling, looking at that person in the eye and saying thank you. You do not need to make up some excuse to detract from whatever it is they're complimenting you on. Accept the compliment with grace. All right, two more. And if you made it this far, thank you so much. The next one is understand that relationships take work, whether that be family relationships, friendships, as well as, of course, intimate relationships. You cannot expect people to be there for you till the end of time. You are going to have to make the effort in order to, even if you don't have a lot of time, meet those people for coffee, send them a nice thank you note. You have to continuously water those relationships. And the last one, number 26, it would be uncharacteristic of me if I didn't talk about femininity. Many of us benefit from learning about femininity because it's a lot in alignment with the way that we essentially are made. And we all have different factors of femininity, different, I guess, ranges on the spectrum of femininity. And my hope is that this channel is going to help you embrace wherever you are on this said continuum, whatever you want to call it. Embracing your femininity is going to help you feel more confident, more fulfilled, and is going to help you understand your life purpose. Your way of being feminine is not going to be exactly the same as somebody else's way of being feminine. You have to find that perfect balance for you. You can only do this through practice and through continuously learning. And this is why I have created a resource bank on my blog where you can find many different content creators who embrace femininity and who help teach about femininity. I will link that again down below if you haven't found that in my previous video. So I will see you in our next video. I appreciate so much if you made it through the whole video, please don't forget to like this video so that other women can find this channel. See you next time. Bye -bye.